Hello all and thank you for joining us at today's webcast. This time all attendees are in a listen-only mode. Please note that as an attendee you are part of a larger audience today. The attendee list is suppressed to maintain attendee privacy. We will be holding a short Q&A session at the conclusion of today's presentation. You may ask an online question anytime throughout the presentation today by clicking on the Q&A panel. I would also encourage you to visit our website and sign up for a free trial download of our software, including our lead products, At Risk, and the Decision Tool Suite. We invite you to sit back and relax and enjoy today's presentation. Alan, you have the controls. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, like Jameson said, my name is Alan Grundy, and the title of this webcast is uh, Custom At Risk Building increase efficiency, accuracy, and get access into the hands of more people in your organization. Three pieces of this webcast is uh, the main piece is uh, model building techniques for models uh, that you want to use for several times. You have several projects that uh, are, are similar. Um, you can build uh, a model that's easy enough uh, for uh, lots of people to use, uh, even if they don't have uh, very much at-risk uh, experience. Um, uh, you can use the core of, of these uh, models. Um, all projects are a little bit unique, uh, so if you need to add some uh, customization to it, you can use the core and just add just a little bit of uh, your customization for each project. Um, and secondly, we'll look at uh, some alternate ways to make uh, tornado charts. Uh, we've all used tornado charts, I'm sure. Uh, this is uh, another way that uh, I found pretty beneficial for me. And then finally, we'll discuss the benefits of incorporating uh, uh, automated correlation matrix fix. Uh, at risk has uh, a correlation matrix fix as well that, that are good. Um, uh, this uh, adds a little bit uh, of a different twist. Um, my experience, most of my experience is with the upstream oil and gas uh, industry, uh, but all of these techniques uh, can be used for, for any industry, uh, for any problem. Um, so if you uh, think that you uh, could use any of these or want any help or assistance with this, uh, there's my contact information, uh, email address, and, uh, and, and phone number. Uh, so uh, let's get on to it. Uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a simple generic example uh, to go through. Uh, it's a, uh, calculating the commute time uh, uh, to get to work. Um, I thought that that would be simple enough. Uh, everybody can understand it regardless of what industry that you're in. Uh, but the problem is that uh, John uh, has been getting a late work, to late work late uh, recently, and he's starting to believe that uh, some people are noticing that, so he wants to remedy that situation. So he needs to find out what the full range of potential commute time uh, from his house to the office, so that he can use that to determine what time to leave for work. Uh, he has to get his kids ready in the morning, so he can't just solve his problem by leaving Ulta early in the morning. Uh, he needs to uh, thread the needle, so to speak. So here's a commute map. Uh, John lives over here in his greenhouse. Um, he travels uh, through some residential streets uh, down uh, Route 59 uh, and then exits on the Bellway 8 into his office over here. Uh, this commute can be broken into, into three segments. Uh, uh, the uh, segment here with residential streets with, with the traffic lights um, and two, two stretches on the highway that have different uh, uh, speeds, uh, highway speeds. Uh, so here's the uh, first uh, pass at uh, what a model would be for that. Um, it uh, probably makes you uh, recognize why you don't like to pick up spreadsheets from other people since it looks fairly complicated. Um, but if you were the one who built this, uh, John, for example, uh, you would know uh, where everything is and it would be fairly easy to, to, to use. Uh, but uh, it can be a little bit helpful uh, just to add a little bit of formatting, uh, some consistent formatting uh, in here. I use the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, scheme here because it's, uh, I've just gotten accustomed to it, but uh, the gray uh, is any sort of title or information like segment one, two, and three. Uh, the pale yellow is the user input, so uh, all of the uh, pale input, uh, pale cells uh, are where the user is going to be doing his work. So first time user of this, uh, right away it eliminates about half of the cells uh, on, on this model 
uh, so he can uh, feel a little more comfortable. He knows where, where, where he's going to be doing his work. Uh, the green is a uh, deterministic calculation. Uh, it, uh, that it's always going to be the same uh, uh, value uh, the, as opposed to the, uh, the blue cells, which are calculations but are probabilistic. Uh, so if you uh, can see here that as uh, you'd have nine to calculate this, only the, uh, only the blue cells are, are changing. Uh, and so you know what's, what's probabilistic and, and what's not. Um, the uh, details of each of these segments here is seg segment one is where you have uh, the lights um, and the uh, oops, sorry about that. I don't know if you can see all this my uh, is blocked a little bit but uh, uh, traffic light one is uh, it's just when you're going from a secondary light uh, secondary street onto a main thoroughfare so it's got preference to the main street so it's got about an 80 percent chance that you're going to get stopped at that light all of the uh, the other ones, it's uh, it's it's hit or miss, 50-50 chance that you're going to get stopped at, at those. Um, if you're stopped, uh, you're going to be stopped anywhere from you know, zero minutes to uh, to uh, either two at the at the traffic one, and all the other ones are just a little little bit different, a little bit shorter. So to determine if you're going to get stopped, the light, I use this random number here, which is a random number between zero and one. Um, if that random number is less than the chance that you're going to get stopped at that light, uh, then in this case here for traffic light number one, it's red. If it's more than that, um, it's, it's going to be green. So um, the way you calculate what your stop time uh, will be uh, is if it's, if it's stopped, if you get stopped at it, and it's going to be the, uh, the time is going to be the result of this uh, uniform distribution uh, of zero to two. Um, and there's your stop sign. If the light's green, uh, there is no stop sign. So to determine what the total uh, travel time for segment one is, uh, you'll take your uh, speed limit times the six miles uh, that you have to travel for segment one, and that gives you 12 uh, minutes. If, uh, if there are no stops, you add your stop time to that to give you what your uh, uh, probabilistic uh, uh, travel time would be uh, for segment one. Segment two and three are a little bit easier. Um, it's just the speed limit that's going to uh, affect what your, what your travel time is going to be. Segment uh, two is uh, seven miles, 10 miles for segment three in the beltway. Um, speed limit is 60, uh, so is 65 uh, on segment one. You're probably not going to be able to, and most likely, uh, since you're going to be speeding up and then slowing down to, to exit, um, most likely going to be a little bit below the speed limit. Uh, but some days, you, uh, traffic's clear, you're going to be able to push the limit a little bit, maybe get up to 70 miles an hour. Uh, but on those days when it's uh, a little bit of rain or a lot of rain, you, you, you may get uh, down to a snail's pace of about 30 miles an hour, is what John figures. Um, same thing for Beltway 8, uh, uh, Beltway. Its uh, speed limit is, uh, is 60, uh, so uh, most likely and your maximum is going to be a little less. But if it rains, you're going to be down to that snail's pace again. So if we uh, look at this, uh, we run this, these are some at-risk uh, plots. Uh, here's an exceedance probability curve of your commute time uh, right here. Uh, I'm used to exceedance probability curves, but uh, you may be used to uh, cumulative probability curve, which is the same data just plotted uh, a little bit differently. Uh, and here is a um, probability density plot or histogram of all of the trials. Uh, so you can see here what the what the what the range is. Same data, just in a little bit different um, format. So uh, a couple of things you might want to add to to this model uh, is uh, is some correlation. Um, if it if it's raining on um, uh, 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 segment two, uh, most likely it's going to be raining uh, in segment three. So you probably want to put a correlation uh, between those. Uh, so here's the correlation matrix. Uh, there's just one place to put a correlation. This pale right here is a co correlate segment two speed to segment uh, three speed. Uh, I figured it bits of the full, full dependency, so uh, John put a one there. Um, the other thing that's related to cor correlation is uh, this traffic light two and three. Um, they're right next to each other, and they're timed such that if you get stopped by one, you're going to get stopped by both of them, or if it's green, uh, for one, it's going to be green for the other. So the way uh, uh, I 
handle that is I've just one, a single random number that's used to test against and determine if it's if it's uh, you're going to be stopped at it or or, or not. Uh, you see here that uh, they always go together because they're all working off of the same uh, traffic light two and three are both working off the same random number. Uh, I choose to make a distinction between the correlation that we talked about here with the correlation matrix and, and this over here, I prefer to call that a, a dependency. Um, they're similar, they, they both make the, uh, the range a little bit wider. Um, you know, if you have uh, correlation or the more dependencies in there. Um, so here's the, the comparison, you see the probability curve, the red is the uh, with correlation and with the dependency. Uh, and the blue is uh, the without. So you can see that uh, that does a little bit make the uh, the the range a little bit a little bit wider. Uh, the the blue is a little bit steeper curve than than the red is. Um, and over here on the probability density plot or the, or the histogram, uh, you can see that uh, the the red the width correlation is is a little bit wider. So this will work fine uh, for John. Um, it's not going to work very well for anybody else unless his next door neighbor also works at the same office building. Um, so we want to make this so it can be used for, for anybody uh, who is trying to calculate what their, what their travel time is, is to work. Um, so uh, I've got the same formatting here. Uh, put the correlation matrix up here. Um, I've uh, allowed for, for five segments. You could make that. 10 segments, whatever whatever you thought you needed. Um, but this has got five in it, and so we could, um, you may not use all five, but uh, it's got uh, allowed you to put up to five. Um, and the data that I've got in here is, is John's commute. It's the same same data that we, we looked at. A um, couple of differences here. We'll look at uh, segment one. Um, we, we had the uh, just a, a constant speed of, of 30 miles an hour uh, in, in the residential area. and, and we just put that in as a single number, but what you can do here, you can allow for there to be a, a range if you want to, or if you want to just have a constant uh, distribution, just put the same number here for min, most likely, and max. Um, and at six miles, uh, you might remember that we have that dependency here between traffic uh, light uh, two and three. You wouldn't want a hard wire, uh, what we had in the, in the previous one, because somebody else may have a dependency somewhere else or no dependency at all. Uh, so the way you can do that is uh, use this dependency key here. Um, uh, put two A's in here, and since they're the same, uh, then the random number that is used for both of those that are tied together in that dependency uh, it are going to be the same. Everything that changes, it's all the like two and three random number is always the same, and so they're either all both going to be green or they're both going to be red. Uh, you can. But other dependencies, put a B and a B here, and you can see here that four and five uh, are always going to be operating off the same uh, random numbers. So they would they would be linked as well. So uh, the segment two is pretty similar. Uh, just just the input up here for the for the for the range of the speed limit. Um, there are no lights, so you don't put any in, and so you won't have any stop time. Uh, the same with, uh, with segment three. Uh, no lights, so there will be no stop, stop time, and the only uh, thing that affects the range of your, of your total time is, is the speed limit. I've added in uh, another option here. Uh, before, we had just a triangular distribution with uh, min most likely max. Uh, if you want to have a uniform distribution, uh, in the most likely, okay. just put a, a, a U, uh, and that triggers uh, the result here in distribution to have a um, to have uh, a uniform distribution. Um, so let's uh, look at the rest of this. Uh, some of these gray uh, cells in here uh, are some. QC uh, type things. If uh, they make a mistake uh, and you put in a number and most likely that's higher than your maximum, um, it's going to be an error and it highlights in red and shows you that you've got an, er an error here. Um, perhaps you've uh, uh, put an error in here, get your min higher than that. 
this goes a little bit further and it tells you that there's an error, uh, but it tells you what, what the problem is, that the min must be less than the max. So you can make these elaborate or complex as you want to, uh, depending on what your need is. You can have it just flag an error as, as this does, or you can get elaborate and, and, and describe uh, what, what is wrong with the entry. Uh, maybe it's just something you, you inadvertently typed in a, uh, a, the, the wrong number, or, or maybe you, you thought that was a good number, um, and uh, it, it will tell you what, what, what is wrong with it. Um, the other uh, you know, thing that you may want to do here uh, that I've done here is I've protected this, this sheet uh, to make sure that that somebody doesn't uh, go into any of these formulas by mistake uh, and, and, and change them. So as if this blue one here, if I try to put something into that, uh, it's a formula, I don't want to change that formula, um, so it'll come up and tell me that, uh, that there's something wrong with that um, and that I can, it's protected and that's not a place that I can, I can change. Any of these that I've unlocked, all of the uh, pale yellows, those are the inputs, you can change those all you want. Okay, so we've got um, this all, all set here. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and run this. Um, you're going to get this message here. It's just a warning, um, and I'll explain to you what this means in, in a second, but I'm going to continue the simulation anyways. I'll explain what that is. Okay. And it, um, it runs. Uh, but let me ask uh, maybe Jameson this. Uh, I've got the uh, GoToWebinars on here. Is that in the way of, of, of everybody being able to see the rest of this? Oh no! It looks it's uh, hidden to us, so it's good. Okay. No, you okay. see it. We okay. we don't see it. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so I I, I reran the uh, the simulation, um, and and uh, it tells me here that I need to update the chart, and I update the. Ch uh, okay. Uh, that is because I have it um, protected. I need to unprotect this. This is a little embarrassing. I'm not sure why. Protect. Unprotect. Not, not sure why that's happening. At any rate, um, if you update the chart, uh, something must be wrong with that macro from the protection. Uh, but it, it'll update your chart uh, every time that you, you rerun and, and the uh, simulation, make a change, rerun the simulation, need to update the chart. It, it updates the chart for you uh, just by clicking this, this map right here. And if, and if it needs to be updated, it, it, will, it, will, it will tell you. Um, uh, uh, another message on the, on the protection here is um, I, I don't think that you need to make a secret of what the, what the uh, password, or password to unprotect it is. As a matter of fact, uh, you, you would like for people to be able to unprotect uh, the spreadsheet when they want to make any customization. Uh, this core uh, worksheet as I've got here now, this model, uh, will work for probably 80% um, of, of what you need, but as soon as somebody wants, has a situation where they've got a, perhaps a, a drawbridge that they've got to deal with uh, getting to work, or a train, or a ferry ride, um, those aren't going to be real common, so you might not want to put that in your in your core sheet, but you want to be able to have the, the flexibility uh, to be able to go off on the side somewhere here and add in what you need for the for the ferry boat ride, for example. Um, so you should be unprotected here. Okay, which it is. All right. Um, 
Let me try one more time here. For the, there we go. All right. So uh, we've um, we've been able to to uh, update the chart there, and I can see here that I've left this as a U. Uh, I wanted that to be 55. So let's uh, run the simulation again. Tells us that we need to update the chart. And we update the chart. Very good. Okay, so what you can see here um, is uh, this is an exceeds probability curve that I've made specifically for what what what, uh, what I want it to be. I don't want to have any additional information on there that I don't want to discuss in a meeting. I just want to put on here just, just the things that I want to discuss. Uh, so we've got the uh, the red curve, the exceeds probability curve, uh, that has the, the most utility. Uh, the uh, gray curve is a probability density plot. Uh, visually, you can get a good idea of the shape if there's any skewness. Um, it's a it's a good thing to have there. But the red curve is the one we get the the, the utility for. Um, when John uh, was first uh, trying to uh, figure out uh, how much time he needed to allow for getting to work. Uh, he thought, oh, I got three segments, uh, about 10 minutes a piece, about 30, 30 minutes to go through the whole thing was his original estimate. Um, and you can see here that on, on this curve here, that's 95% of the time he'd be late. So um, that uh, stands to reason why he needed to work this. Um, and even if he looks at the result of the most likely input, a deterministic calculation using just the most likely inputs, not the ranges, but just the most likely inputs, um, he gets about 32 minutes, so that's probably wasn't too far off with his original uh, guess. Uh, but still, uh, if you just used a, a deterministic calculation, uh, over 70% of the time, he would be uh, he would be late for work. Um, so what he needs to do is he needs to look at the whole curve here, and if he sees down here um, at about 10% of the time, uh, if he if he allowed 40 minutes to get to work. Uh, he would only be late 10% uh, of the time, which is once every every two weeks. Uh, so maybe that's uh, maybe that's sufficient. Or if he uh, wanted to uh, make sure that he definitely was never late, um, uh, it, it, he could uh, leave uh, 50 minutes uh, on time to get to get to work. So um, that's a lot uh, but uh, better uh, than uh, allowing uh, 30 minutes uh, to get there. So uh, before I go on to the tornado charts specific to this model, uh, let's talk about uh, tornado charts in, 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 in general. Uh, the most uh, common uh, tornado chart uh, that I've run across, the uh, first tornado charts that I saw, uh, was uh, a deterministic chart like this, which was referenced to uh, the, the, the result of the most likely or the most likely of, of the distribution in this case. Um, so you've got these bars, and you can see here uh, for uh, input A uh, in, in this equation, it's a simple equation, um, A times B times C, D and E is, is the output. Uh, very simple. Here are the, are the inputs, uh, all triangular inputs. Uh, so for, for variable A, uh, this could get uh, all the way down to 20 or as high as 80. Um, so uh, that could that could give gives you this full length of this of this bar. Uh, another way is to to have that same information instead of having plus or minus uh, for the most likely is just to have the the actual output uh, along along the bottom. And you can see how this is made uh, pretty easily. Uh, looking at these uh, trace dependence here, uh, this uh, is the low end of of the bar uh, on on. Uh, input A, and it's uh, the most likely input for, for all the other um, input variables except for A. It's at, it's at the low end. That's how you get the uh, low end of the curve. And for the high end for, for, for that bar. So it's, it's just deterministic um, and very easy uh, to, to calculate uh, and, and, and to use. Okay. This is what I call a probabilistic tornado chart. 
where instead of being uh, deterministic and using uh, the highs and lows, it actually has uh, a distribution to it. Um, so this curve right here uh, for, for input A is coming off of this, and where that's calculated is like the deterministic one, it's using the most likely inputs for all of the variables except for the one that you're interested in, and it's using the distribution for, for variable A. And so you, the result is a distribution uh, for, for your output uh, that has everything else being held constant except for uh, variable A, and you get this distribution here. And the difference between the bar chart here, the deterministic and the probabilistic one, is you can see that the bulk of the probability is in the middle. This gives you sort of a visual uh, impression that maybe it's just as likely to be out here in the extremes as it is in the middle, um, where this actually gives you a, a much better idea of, of, of what that distribution looks like. This upper chart here is uh, related to the result of the most likely input. Um, since all of these distributions are symmetrical, the result of the most likely input is the same as the mean. Uh, and so this chart down here, which is, uh, is built with respect to the mean, where you, instead of uh, holding everything at its most likely, you're holding it at the mean except for the, the curve that you're interested in. Uh, so if these are exactly the same uh, as, as they are symmetrical, uh, but if you change this, it will make variable uh, a uh, asymmetric and we'll run this and we'll update the charts. You can see here now that uh, this is uh, an asymmetric curve. Okay, The bar chart shows the skewness as well. Okay. But uh, the probability is much lower way out here in the ends, and this kind of still gives you that impression that it's maybe just as likely to be real high as it is to, is to be low. So this uh, just kind of helps you figure out the, uh, the, the, the skewness of the distribution and gives you a, a, a better look at uh, what the, what the uh, contribution from each of the, the input variables are. Uh, the other lines on here, the two red lines, are uh, the P90 and P10 of the overall distribution. That's this red curve here. That's where everything, all variables, are, uh, are, uh, are probabilistic. Uh, <clears throat> so you might want to see where the P90 and P10 are. So if you wanted to figure out what a deterministic case to get to the P90, uh, you could realize that you're not going to be able to do it with uh, just a single variable except for maybe uh, uh, input A, which is pretty rare, uh, to get down to the P90. Uh, yeah, the, the, the P90, uh, you uh, might be able to get it with, uh, with uh, input C, uh, but probably going to be a combination uh, of a few of these. Uh, the black line is the, is the result of the most likely. Here the black line is the, is the, the, the mean uh, of, a, of, the, of the overall distribution. Uh, so depending on what uh, you like as a point of reference, uh, the result of the most likely input or the mean, uh, you might want to use either one of these two charts. So uh, these are pretty straightforward. These are pretty um, simple looking uh, curves. But uh, you may get uh, in certain uh, analysis uh, some pretty complicated looking ones. Um, Hopefully you'll never get one as complicated as this, but uh, some of your distributions may be like this. If, for example, uh, input variable uh, v is a is a um, result of, of say three scenarios uh, with that are weighted uh, weighted scenarios uh, you can see that all three of these bumps are, 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 are there and you can see the different distributions maybe you've got three variables um, uh, weighted uh, uh, distributions but they are discrete uh, <clears throat> it might look like um, uh, X here this orange one or uh, maybe here's a two scenario where where the, the bulk of the probabilities in the middle you may have some analysis or some data that tells you that you think that it's uh, in that tight little range there but maybe there's a 10 percent 20 percent chance that that data uh, is misleading erroneous or red herring uh, or and so 
20% uh, of the time, uh, you just know what the, what the bounds are and you have that as a uniform distribution uh, from here to here. It is a simple triangular distribution here, the light green, uh, <coughs> the blue is a uniform distribution, so it would uh, just have a flat top across the across thing. So you can use these uh, probabilistic tornado charts as two things. One is a, is a QC. Uh, if you see some irregularities or something odd uh, in the shape of any of these curves, you need to make sure that that's what you intended to have happen. Maybe you've made an error in your calculations. Maybe you've made an error in some input. You need to be able to explain uh, all of the, uh, the oddities or the irregularities uh, in the shapes of those those curves. Uh, so so uh, that you'll know that 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 you, your calculations and your input are right. But also, uh, as you're presenting this. Uh, you can, in one chart, show uh, the complexities of, of your input uh, and, and, how, and how you design your analysis uh, with, uh, with these inputs, with these uh, curves off of this uh, probabilistic uh, tornado chart. Uh, so you can see here that all of this character is lost in this deterministic uh, uh, tornado chart where you just have the bars. Um, Okay. Here's a uh, at-risk generated uh, tornado chart. Uh, this is the co correlation coefficients. Here is the inputs ranked by effect on a mean, which is an interesting one. Uh, you can see here that if you look down through here, uh, it's going to pick up all of the distributions that you have in your spreadsheet. You can see here there's some from, from John's commute. Uh, analysis here that don't have anything to do uh, with, with this analysis. But uh, you, you can uh, hide or, or edit those ones out that don't have anything to do with it. So you can see here, here's the, uh, the at-risk uh, correlation coefficient uh, tornado chart uh, after you've used just the ones that are, that are important to, to this analysis. Uh, but again, still, you just don't get the character. Uh, you don't get all of the details uh, that you're uh, analysis uh, that you put into your analysis uh, with, without using the uh, probabilistic tornado chart. So let's go back to, to John's example here and I didn't realize that I wasn't going to be able to see all of my areas. So let's pull these in here. This is the tornado charts for John's commute example. Um, so here we've got uh, segment three and segment two are the uh, are the two at the, at the top. Uh, they're the most uh, most uncertain, and here are each of the uh, uniform distributions associated with with the stoplights. Um, you can see here that uh, how how I define what the um, what the result of the most likely or the deterministic most likely is. Uh, I said that uh, traffic light three, uh, it's 80 percent chance, yeah, most likely you're going to get stopped at that. Had a choice of doing uh, the, uh, the three and the two or, or the four and the five. I chose the four and the five. Uh, so if, if uh, you can see with this uniform distribution, if you get stopped uh, at three or two uh, or you, at the same time, uh, since those are dependent, uh, that's just going to, most likely, it's going to be your not stop, but it is going to uh, make your travel time worse uh, if, if you are stopped. So that's why there's a, uh, a shift in, in those. So again, you need to be able to explain uh, those, wh why, why they're, they're that way. Um, you see here that segment three is, is the one at the top. You might have thought, uh, if, you, if you look at the input, that at segment uh, two, since it has the widest range, it goes from 30 to 70. Um, segment three goes from 30 to, to 55. So you might have thought at first glance that uh, that maybe there's a mistake there, that uh, segment two would be the, uh, the, the most uncertain. But uh, if you look at the miles, uh, segment two is shorter. Uh, segment three is, is longer. So sure enough, uh, 
since that, that has a more of an effect, since it's more miles, um, that is going to have more of an effect uh, than, than the shorter distance one. So that makes sense. Uh, you also may uh, want to put things all on uh, at the same level uh, rather than looking at and comparing uh, each of these stoplights individually with you know, the, the longer uh, segment three and segment two, um, maybe you might want to just add uh, uh, and combine segment one all into, in, into, into one, one distribution. Um, and so, so that's, what you, that's what you see here. So you just got segment uh, one, two, and three all compared to the same. So uh, one of the other benefits of standardizing your model here is you can have a um, sort of a summary uh, page where you uh, uh, <coughs> put all of your uh, information, maybe your, your plots, uh, maps, something to do with your analysis here, um, the, the, the numbers, uh, mean, the result most likely, P90, P10, uh, what, the, what the P90, P10 range is, what the full range is, uh, some indication of, of how wide the range is, uh, P10, P90 ratio. You could use a standard deviation, but uh, if you've got those all in one place, uh, you can create yourself a, um, a one-page uh, executive summary, if you will, or just one page that you could uh, show that, that, that describes the whole thing. Um, put your conclusions on there that uh, the original estimate was significantly too low, presenting an uh, over 90% chance of being late. The deterministic calculation was also too low, so you really need to do a probabilistic analysis to figure out uh, how much time you should allow for work. 40 minutes uh, is pretty good, 10% of the time, once every two weeks. Uh, you'd be late uh, if you really want to eliminate that altogether. It really needs to go to about 50 minutes. Um, the potential for uh, slow speeds uh, on the highway seem to cause the longest commute rates. The, these out here for segment two and three are the ones that really send this out long, especially since they're correlated. Uh, so it may be what you want to do to eliminate some of your uncertainty is uh, seek some alternate routes uh, that use as an option for the rainy day. Uh, so you can put the information on there, um, the conclusions all, all on one page, um, and maybe if it's a standardized, uh, then your management or whoever's looking at this uh, will get a, a warm feeling uh, after looking at, at, at several of these, and they can see uh, that these analysis were done in a consistent fashion. Okay, um, let's move on to, uh, to correlations. There's some schematics uh, that, that show um, variables that you might have correlated. Uh, for example, over here, you've got uh, variable A correlated with variable B, but you also have variable A correlated to C. Uh, then there's an implied correlation uh, that between B and C. Um, so if you go into your correlation matrix uh, and you put, uh, let's say, a 1 in Alan, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, good, good. Okay. Um, you, can, you can see here that... Um, you can see here that there, that there needs to be a correlation uh, between here, but if you leave it blank, uh, at risk uh, sees that as, as zero, um, and, and that creates a, an invalid correlation. Um, and then that, uh, uh, would, that risk would signal that, and if you don't have any adjustment uh, matrix in there, um, the, the standard correlation for, uh, fix for that would be it tries to honor this zero, and it changes the inputs that you, that you gave it, um, and the result would be uh, a, a 0.7 for, for A and B and A and C and allow and keeps the, the zero in there. But really what you wanted, um, because you didn't think about the, the applied correlation, you, you wanted a, a one for all three of these uh, when you, when you get, just got this. Uh, so uh, in this one and one correlation with the implied correlation of one, there is no wiggle room. Uh, if you have less than one, as in this case, a 0.9 and a 0.8, uh, there is some wiggle room, um, and you calculate that uh, with this equation here. Um, it's the product of, of the two correlation, plus or minus the square root of all of this, 
uh, or, or 72 plus or minus 0.6, which gives you some wiggle room of uh, 0.46 to, to 0.98. Any, any value for uh, A to, to, to or it should be B to C uh, in that range would, would, would be valid. Okay. Uh, the correlation fix that I've always used is since I didn't think about the correlation between B and C, um, I don't necessarily think it's zero, and I don't necessarily think it's at the bottom or the top of that range. Uh, the middle of that range would probably be, in my opinion, uh, the, the, the best value to have for that correlation, primarily since I didn't, really have, I didn't think about it. Um, so uh, I don't mind calculating something and putting it in, in the middle of, of, of the range. So uh, the method that I, I use uh, takes a 0.72. Um, so let's, let's look at that um, right here. Uh, here. Here's the, the what I call the auto fix, for lack of a better name. It's the method that, that, that I've used. Um, this is the weight adjusted method that uh, at risk now has in it. When I first started building these big spreadsheets with big uh, correlation matrix um, that were very difficult to find uh, implied correlations, uh, the weighted uh, adjustment uh, option wasn't wasn't there. Uh, when I first used it, uh, I had a very large correlation matrix. Um, it was 225 by 225. Uh, the adjusted uh, weight method uh, was just way too long. Um, I, I tested it just recently uh, with a 240 by 240, and it, it worked like a champ. Um, it took less than two minutes to, to calculate through, um, which was it, it ran great. Uh, very impressed with that. Um, but to, to show what the difference is, the two is uh, I'm going to take out these correlations here. Just to make it real simple, this is the example that we just showed. We got a 0.9 and a 0.8 uh, between uh, A and B and A and C. Uh, so here's where the implied correlation should be, uh, the, the, the B and C, but I'm going to leave it blank. Okay. And what this does is it goes and it looks at uh, all of the uh, correlations that are in the matrix uh, that would influence or, or imply uh, something for this, for this location right here uh, in the matrix. So basically what that is, is it looks at all of the uh, correlations in the same column and in the same row uh, multiplied by each other uh, and, and it comes up with the, uh, implied, the, the maximum implied correlation uh, right, right here. Uh, so the next matrix here is the direct input that I gave it up here plus any implied correlation. Uh, well, in the, I'll show you in a second, but uh, uh, what may happen is with your new implied correlation and any other correlations you might hear, that may imply another set of correlations um, and, and so forth. Um, so this goes through a second pass of looking through the correlations. And this final one here is, is the direct input. Um, even though there's some implied ones here, uh, I want the direct input and, and the implied that, that, that I have here. Um, so let's look and see how the uh, uh, weight adjusted works with that. Got the same inputs. Uh, th this is the uh, the weight adjusted uh, matrix, uh, and the values you put in here are anything from zero to one, uh, 100. And if if it's a 100, then that means that you 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 definitely don't want that number to be changed uh, when it makes the fix. It, the lower the number is, the the the, the, the higher the likelihood that it. it it may need to be changed, and that's the that's the value that it would uh, that it would change. Uh, so I think if you're going to use this, uh, any any number that I actually put in to the correlation, uh, I've thought about those. Uh, those are the ones that I want to keep in there. I don't really want those to change. So I I, I put a, put a 100 if there's any any value at all you know, entered into the direct output, and and a zero if I, if I haven't put anything in there. there. Uh, so <clears throat> here's the, uh, the the adjusted matrix that you get uh, using this method. Uh, here it's got the, the nine and the eight, uh, just like we had over here. It kept those, uh, but instead of uh, the 72 here, I've got the 46. And what you might remember uh, is that 46 is at the low end of the of the acceptable range. Uh, and that's, seems to be what, what uh, this method is using. And, and you can't fault the logic. If, if at-risk doesn't know 
uh, if you put a zero in there or if you just left it blank that you intended that to be. So to make this uh, a valid correlation, it made a change, but only the slightest amount of change that it, that it needed to make that a valid correlation. That's, uh, that, 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 that logic is, is sound. Um, I prefer to think that if I left it blank, it's because I didn't think about it. I'm not necessarily married to the zero. Um, and I would rather it uh, be in, in the middle of that range rather than at one end or the other. Um, I think just in general, we oftentimes don't put enough correlation in it. And that's oftentimes why the ranges don't seem as a gut feel at the end. Uh, we like all the input, but the ranges don't seem wide enough. Um, so I think that a lot of that is because we, we oftentimes don't put enough correlation. So I would have the error of putting um, not the minimum amount of correlation, but, but the maximum amount of correlation. So uh, I still like <coughs> this method uh, for, for, for that reason. Um, let me put some more correlations in here and you can see, see what happens. I'll put the same correlations over here. Um, so picked up the the the, the point seven two like it did last time, okay. But then in the in the second round, um, it it the some of the implied correlation with some of the direct input in here, it picked up several more uh, implied correlations. Um, in in a large spreadsheet, uh, rather than having uh, all of the uh, the cells here with, with with these formulas in, it would take forever to build something like this with much larger uh, correlations. I've got a macro that does that, uh, and so it can it can handle any size of, of a correlation matrix. But it does the same does the same calculation, um, and so you hear that, that this would be the result of the uh, of the with all of the direct input plus pass one and two of, of the, the implied correlations. And you see here that it is different uh, than what the what the uh, uh, weighted adjustment method uh, uses. Uh, you're getting a couple of these uh, negatives. Not real sure how you can get a negative from all of these uh, positive uh, inputs. Um, they, they aren't very largely negative, uh, so they virtually have no impact at all. Probably in there for a very good reason. I'm not going to question that. I, I, I will look into it. But uh, but but uh, it doesn't. Uh, so it seem to be picking up all of the implied correlations the same way uh, that this does. Um, so I still prefer this method here uh, over over the adjusted uh, method, um, except for one uh, very very good reason. Um, this is a problem that has plagued me for a while. Is this auto fix method does a great job of finding the implied uh, correlations and filling it in there. But what it can't do, uh, if if the user uh, directly inputs an invalid matrix, remember that uh, what's valid here is anything from 0 0.6 uh, to a 0.98. Uh, we'll, we'll say, for example, I put a 0.2 in there, uh, direct input. Well, that's since I put that in here, that's going to carry all the way through here, um, and and this is going to be an invalid uh, matrix. So when I run this. Uh, at risk is going to stop, give me the warning, um, and it's going to ask me, do I want to fix it? And I'm going to have to take the standard fix, which just basically sucks uh, correlation out of the out of your your, your analysis. Um, so it's not a desirable thing. So what I would what I would probably do here is if I put a point two over here, um, it calculates through, makes some adjustments on the 0.9 and 0.8 here. So, so this is valid, and this is a valid correlation matrix, um, and this would go through just, just fine. Uh, uh, what I'll probably do is, I like these auto, this, this the way this puts the implied correlation is, but then I would take this and use the adjusted matrix, uh, if needed, uh, on, on this one here uh, to make the corrections for when the user uh, inadvertently uh, puts in a uh, direct input in that it's a, a violation or, a, or an invalid correlation. Uh, so uh, I think that's uh, everything that I've got uh, in here so far. Uh, this is what we talked about, uh, modeling techniques uh, uh, that you can use, uh, put it in the hands of people that aren't uh, uh, as, uh, as an expert as perhaps you are. 
Um, we looked at different ways to make tornado charts. They're good QC products. Uh, if you can explain every little oddity on the tornado chart, uh, then you probably can do a good job in understanding what your analysis is, both the inputs and the calculations. Uh, and also a good tool to explain to somebody uh, some of the complexities of your analysis. Um, and we discussed some of the benefits of the automated correlation matrix uh, versus the uh, weighted uh, distribution. So again, uh, if you have any uh, business-related questions or discussions that you'd like to have, uh, contact me. Uh, here's my email address and, and here's my phone number. So uh, I think I'm uh, right at the time limit here. So, uh, Jameson, turn over to you if uh, you've got any questions. Uh, well, well uh, Alan, this, Alan, this was great. Uh, you, you can figure maybe the, what the number one question is uh, after people have seen this model. The, the number one question is, can we have uh, this model or a version of this model? So I was just asking that for many of the attendees sure. wonder that. <laughs> sure, you, you, you tell me how to, how to put it out there for them. Oh, good, good. You can just, you can send me a copy. Is it, is it too large to email? <laughs> That's... Pro probably not. Okay, good, um, good. If, 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 if it is, we can put oh, it you, sure. you have a lot of fans uh, about this model, so. <laughs> Uh, we had a couple questions that are maybe almost like exposing a magic trick, but I thought maybe we'd <laughs> we'd ask. Uh, let me let me go back to it, but just take a second. How did you make those uh, custom chart tornado diagrams? Um. Okay, how did I make them? Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll show, that, show you here. It, okay. Yeah. The the uh, all the calculations. You know, basically, you'd like to um, hide or remove uh, the calculations um, from where the uh, user is going to be putting his inputs. And so, so what I've typically try to do is, is move them somewhere else in the spreadsheet or put them in another tab uh, somewhere. And that's where these black tabs are here. Uh, so, so um, I'm not going to be able to show you uh, specifically because it, it is a little complicated. Uh, but uh, here's uh, okay. There we go. Here's, yeah, yeah. here's the here's the cal here's the calculation. <laughs> here's all of the variations. Um, it it goes it goes down here and and, and creates the uh, probability density plot of each, of each one of those distributions. Um, puts them down here and, and the update macro uh, moves everything over here, sorts it so you get your, 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 your longest one, uh, the most uncertain one at the top, and, 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 and increasing less and less as you, as you go down. So here, here's where it is. Um, right. they're, they're in here a couple of times. So this, this is the, the one for the, uh, for the John commuter uh, method. Uh, and, uh, so here, here they are. Uh, they're, they're, they're back here. They're Great. back here, hidden. Um, you can poke around there uh, all you all you want. Um, give me a call, and I can help you out to build these. Okay. Good, good. Let's see. If we'll, I think we have time for a couple more questions. I'm going to look through our questions. If we miss the again, if we miss these questions, there are quite a few. The, you can definitely email us. Okay. Uh, let's see. I had an early one that I wanted to... Oh, for the tornado chart, is determining the critical path a requirement? I thought that was interesting because I wasn't didn't quite understand it. Mm, I guess I'd have to know what the critical path was. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Critical path. Um, it, it, I'm not sure. The critical path is what the uh, deterministic, uh, most likely, or result the most likely. Um, yeah, that's that's a simple. That, that's probably not what uh, what he's asking. Okay. If that. Let's see if we're. Yeah. If we're still here. I'll check the chat. Let's see. Oh, a number of people wonder about a recording. Yes, we're we're recording it, and we we should be sending a follow up email with the 
information. Let's see. I'm going through our questions. Is it? Well, I think that might be it. Let's go to the bottom here. Oh, there's a question about what we're looking at. What is the exceedance probability curve? What is the exceedance probability curve? Um, up in, in here, it's, it's the red curve. Um, and it's the, you can read off of the y-axis the chance that uh, you will exceed uh, the value you know, here. Uh, for example, uh, with this yellow dot is here, um, the chance that, that you will uh, have to travel longer uh, than 30 minutes is 95%. Uh, it's uh, just the you know, one minus the uh, cumulative probability curve that uh, perhaps most people are or, uh, more, or more people are, com are more familiar with. Uh, but it's, it's the chance that you will exceed that number. Being in the oil and gas industry, it was uh, um, oftentimes, uh, instead of minutes, that was better of oil, a cubic feet of gas. And uh, you wanted to report the chance that you were going to get that size or greater uh, to, uh, to anyone, rather than the chance that you would be smaller than that size. So it's bigger, it's better. <laughs> Good, good. Oh, we got we we got an uh, uh, explanation about the critical path that it comes from project management. It's uh, what they use in project management to to maybe just uh, des describe what you were just describing before. Yeah, I, I guess the, the the critical path. Um, well, I guess uh, per, perhaps uh, you know, for the tornado chart, but a critical path might mean. Um, perhaps the, uh, at, at, at some point uh, that this commute time in minutes uh, might, might be too low uh, that it's, it's, it's critical that, that uh, think things need to be done about it. So, so perhaps uh, you know, I, I put the P90 here. Uh, uh, there, there may be some other value that if it gets below that, uh, that, that, it's, that it's critical. You, you could put any any value in there to, to flag uh, what which one of these input variables push you down below that critical timing. Mm. Perhaps, perhaps that answers the question. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll certainly uh, uh, this uh, we'll have a lot of questions to answer maybe over the next day or so. And actually, if you're watching a recording of this in the future, please reach out to us too. We we'd like to hear from you. And uh, Alan, I should. Should, I guess we're we're hitting that time. I should let you go, uh, and I will be sending you an email this afternoon with some more questions. And I know we couldn't get to them all today. And I I want to thank everybody for for coming and uh, and thanks for your feedback. Uh, people really like this presentation and they really like the model. So <laughs> thank you for showing them this. This is a this is quite a bit of work. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, well, I want to thank you, everybody. And again, uh, I'm glad this is a, a point of discussion and it's opened up a lot of ideas for people. And, and Alan, thank you so much for doing this for us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Great. Yeah, yeah, you'll be hearing from me shortly, too. Thank you, okay. everybody. And everybody, you'll be hearing from us, too. <laughs> Thanks.